Sam Warner of Physical Liquid, welcome to Irish Startup TV. Thank you very much. Sam, you're the co-founder and current CEO of Physical Liquid. Yeah. Who else is involved in the project? Uh, there's two other co-founders, so there's uh, Michael Garland, who's uh, current CTO, and then there's David Feely, who's uh, co-founder and main investor in the company. And tell us a little bit more about Physical Liquid. What is it? What does it do? Uh, well, it's sort of evolved a bit <laughs> over the, the years we've been here, but we're essentially an advert gaming company, and more specifically, a mobile advert gaming company. And what that is, is... Um, Mobile advert gaming is using mobile games and interactive apps to market real world products and services. Um, and we, we've sort of come to the realization that advertising agencies and brand managers internationally are just now starting to put the, the lion's share of their budgets into uh, digital and more specifically mobile and mobile interactive. But they lack the in-house expertise of a dedicated game development team to create the original content they want and need. So we sort of exist to solve that problem for them. So we're, we're, we're sort of game development as a service for uh, ad agencies and brand managers. So you would literally create a game that would be suitable for helping a company to promote or advertise the product? Exactly, yeah. And uh, there's another trend um, as well with ad blocking, which is a, a current trend. You know, most advertisers have... We, we spoke to Sean Blanchfield about this the other day. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. It's a big issue. Yeah, it's, it's a big issue. I mean, it, it's wiping, you know, billions at this stage of advertisers worldwide. And uh, it's, you know, traditionally you have banner ads on your apps or pop-up ads, and you can simply install some ad blocking software which gets rid of all those. And, and this is on mobile as well as desktop? Yeah, mobile as well as desktop. Okay. It's becoming an increasing trend on mobile and the, the actual the next iOS uh, software release uh, from Apple will include an inbuilt ad blocker so you can simply flick it on in options and all right. ads are blocked and all that. Will that be on by default? I wonder. Uh, it, I don't think it's on by default okay. but it's, it's... It's certainly a it's, problem if it's there. Yeah exactly you know because uh, you know most most apps on the, the apps and games on the stores are free and they're just supported by ads, pop-up ads and banner ads so it's going to be a major problem for advertisers and what we want to do is try and steer them away from you know your only way of advertising on these apps is not just banner and pop-up you know we want to make the the actual game or the interactive application the advert itself so you know whether it's a, it's a car racing game for a, a you know a, a, a big car company or if it's a game about pouring a, you know a pint of beer for a big beer company or something like that so it, it's it's all about creating original game content that the user wants to engage with, but it's also advertising a product or service. It's like interactive them. product placement in a fun way that you want to actually engage with. Yeah, exactly. And it's, 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 from all our research, it's where the trend is going and it's where advertising agencies and brand managers want to go, which will avoid all this ad blocking stuff that's happening at the moment, but they don't have the in-house expertise. So we're just there to, to help solve that problem for them. You mentioned research. Is this a spin-out company? Uh, no, we're spin-in to Nova UCD. Okay. So, um, so can you explain that? Well, the, 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 the idea <laughs> originated, um, as, as many good uh, Irish business ideas originate in a pub, <laughs> and <laughs> it was myself and David Feely, the co-founder, um, who's David's a, a sort of serial entrepreneur, and I was working for one of his companies at the time. And we were sitting in a, a small quiet pub in County Kildare and we were discussing business ideas and you know what's what's the next great business idea. And I had a background in, in software, game and app development. And uh, so we naturally got talking about app development companies and how we'd make a successful one. And uh, it sort of turned out that the, the, the answer was sitting right in front of us in the pint of Guinness. So we, um, we basically decided that, you know, why what, don't what we make a game about pouring the perfect pint of Guinness? Because we needed something that would make us stand out from the competition, all the other game app developers. So we, we built this, this demo product, which used your, your mobile phone, you'd tilt your mobile phone as a, a, perf a, as a virtual pint glass, and you'd, you'd go through the six steps of, of pouring the perfect pint of Guinness. And we developed liquid physics technology and everything around us to make it, make it look flashy. And, uh, and then we, we decided, you know, we could build a company out of this, you know, this is, this is the way mobile and digital and interactive advertising is going. So, you know, why don't we use this as a demo product and, and you know, build a company that 
builds these kind of games for brands and advertising agencies. So that's that's sort of where the, the, the idea originated. Myself and David came up with it, and then we uh, we brought Michael on board, who's been a, a software engineer for as long as there's been software engineers since the 80s. <laughs> and uh, the three of us got together, built a business plan, pitched it into Nova UCD, and uh, demoed our, 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 our Guinness Point pouring game, and started up here in October 2013. Right. So that's that's sort of it all. It all came from a point of Guinness in a pub, <laughs> Brilliant. and it's 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 scaled from there. Yeah. So yeah. tell us about your experience at Nova. How instrumental has that facility been? Yeah. Towards your your current position. Well, it's it, we sort of we, we're sort of in a different stage of the company now than we have been previously. I mean, we you mentioned we, some pivots or alluded to. It, well, yeah. I mean, we 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 incorporated in June 2013, uh, which is quite a while ago, and then we. We set up shop here in Nova in October 2013 and we sort of spent the first while sort of locking ourselves away and drawing the curtains and building technologies and strategies and business plans and financial projections and all that sort of stuff and that's mostly what we've been doing to try and get the company to a stage where it really stands out and it is a bit set apart and it's only now recently that we, we, we sort of going you know here we are this is what we can do and we're, we're engaging in a new funding round now we've started pitching to some of the biggest advertising agencies in the world and we're you know in negotiations with one of the biggest brands in the world so <clears throat> at the start uh, for the majority of the time we've been here in Nova we did sort of lock ourselves away and we didn't really engage with all the fantastic facilities and uh, help that Nova can give us but this last year now they have been instrumental because we're, we're getting on this publicity train and they, they have great connections for bringing us into Enterprise Ireland, they have great connections even in the advertising industry and of course you know things like this don't don't happen unless Nova UCD are here. Yeah so. they've been incredibly welcoming and supportive of Irish Startup TV. Yeah. So on this subject of you mentioned locking yourselves away, was that something that just had to be done to get to a certain point or looking back would you have done things differently? Um, I think like I think any startup looking back there's lots of things they would have done differently you know but uh, it, it was I think an, a necessary thing to do because we knew we couldn't just you know pitch to a potential first client with an idea on paper or a PowerPoint presentation we had to go away and build some uh, sort of amazing standout technology and actually build a product and say, you know, here it is, this is what we can do, this is it, ready to go. Rather than, you, you know, going into a boardroom with a PowerPoint presentation, this is what we'll do in eight months' time. So to this point then, so because you had the domain expertise, because you had the concept, rather than looking for funding, your initial reaction was to just use your time and to build out a product and then look for customers. Uh, Yes, yes and no. I mean, we have raised a considerable amount of funding uh, to date, uh, which, and we're going through a new funding round now. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, we, we had to spend the majority of our time, like you get into any startup when they're client reliant, uh, gets into this chicken and an egg. Heavily interrupt driven. <laughs> yeah, you know. So <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it, it's you know, you, you go to your a list of, of clients and you you pitch them and. They all want to know well, what other clients have you worked with. No one wants to jump into the deep end first with a startup, and that's the problem you get into. So we decided, listen, we have to build the thing first and go to them with this is practically the finished product. Are you interested? And so far, I mean, it, it's it's still not. There aren't dotted lines signed yet, but so far, it's it's worked out as a good strategy. That's been very helpful for you. That's yeah. Great. So where to next? Then you're nearly there. What's the next big milestone? Well, there, there's sort of, as I sort of mentioned, there's two sort of two key milestones that we're looking at at the moment. Um, the first is our funding round, so we're we're going into a, a sort of joint funding round with an external investor in Enterprise Ireland. So that's going to be a big milestone for us, which will give us a lot of runway into the future. Um, as I said, the next big milestone is getting the first client to sign the dotted line. You know, like at, at the moment we are going around knocking on doors and, and doing pitches, and we, we've got great reaction and very positive uh, feedback but they're all waiting for the first one to go on board for you know sign the so deadline Sachi first. and Sachi are watching they need to sign up because you're going to be super busy exactly well well that's the thing I mean that's what everyone has been telling us what we believe ourselves once we sign the first major client and they are major clients and major brands you know we should be able to stop knocking on doors and start answering the telephone type thing you know so work will hopefully come our way at that point Fantastic. Well, Sam, thanks so much for sharing your story with us today and uh, best of luck. Yeah, thanks for having me. Future. Thank yeah. you.